welcome to today's lecture on design analysis of orbit motor 2 which is geometric volume displacement in earlier lecture the uh, in part 1 i have discussed about the geometric design of the star and envelope that is ring of an orbit motor in this lecture uh, I shall show how to estimate the geometric volume of a chamber and then swept volume and how to find out the volume displacement rate with the uh, shaft rotation. So, as discussed earlier the epitaphoid gener generated ropimas that is rotary piston machines orbit and zero to units the envelope ring forms the chambers whereas the epitrochoid star acts as an piston if we look into this so this is the chamber so one particular chamber is shown here which is formed by we can say that the outer member that is an envelope that is ring is uh, the cylinder and this is acting as a piston unlike the um, cylindrical piston machines in this case the area varies and so variation of volume with the shaft rotation is equal to the variation of area multiplied by the thickness of the star and ring which is constant. Um, it is also discussed the number of chambers is equal to the number of nodes of the envelope that is equal to z. So, the number of chamber will be equal to the number of roller in this case or it might be sometimes integral part of the envelope. Whereas, we know the lobe of the star will be 1 less than this. So, here there will be 6 lobes if we take z is equal to 7. Again in earlier discussion what we have seen that the ripple is less in case of odd number of chambers. So, while we shall discuss all the formulations particularly we have to be careful formulations are like that z is always an odd number that means number of chambers are always odd. A complete cycle of piston action comprises of two phases namely volume expansion and volume compressions. Let us look into this. So, this is this is the star and this is the ring this is modified epitrochoid what we have learned and this is basically envelope and this modification is nothing but the constant difference inward shift of the original epitrochoid generated so for which the envelope actually goes through this center point envelope and then if we modify this envelope what we find this contact portion becomes circular arc. If you notice this rotation you will find that this contact is not up to the full arc it is some angle the maximum leaning angle you can say in both directions from the center. So, but, but the thing is that we can replace this um, we can either make it integral or we can replace this integral part by roller. Okay. Advantage of roller I have already discussed which is that we can replace this roller if this is this is worn out. Okay. Now, other part of the envelope is that this circle on which this rollers are uh, kept I mean uh, on the outer body 
this is slightly less than the circle the which is called pitch circle slightly less than that. So, this roller does not come out and it is selected on the basis of at the topmost position of this roller. Okay. Now, this we can call that at this position the piston at its top dead center top dead center. Okay. Now, when it will rotate you will find gradually this uh, space is in uh, being increased the black space is being increased that is the change in area. So, if we can estimate that change in area then if we multiply with the thickness of the star and uh, this envelope which is equal nominally which is equal we can estimate the volume displacement and that is that we will learn today. But one important thing here I would like to discuss that if we consider this is the bottom dead center then at the, this position you would not find any other chambers in top dead center. Top dead center will be which one will be the top dead center in next while it will start rotating you will find that this uh, uh, this one will become the it, it will reach at top dead center this one just a small rotation. Let us see you can see this it is already had bottom dead center and then again say suppose this is the minimum at this position you will find after a slight rotation this is becoming a top dead center. This angle can easily be calculated from the phases of such orbit motor from the analysis of the phases of such orbit motor. It is important to examine for the flow distributor valve action. If we analyze the flow distributor valve action, the duration of those phases in terms of shaft rotation for a single cylinder as well as the multi multi cylinder action. So, what we have to do we need to analyze how long a chambers or what with respect to the shaft rotation at what angle this bottom dead center and top dead center is occurring and according to that we have to also look into this and the distributor valve they should act accordingly. So, this phase analysis is not shown uh, it will not be shown in today's lecture, but we will accept that when this is in expansion mode then one um, the oil in channels are connected and when it is in the compression mode the oil out channels will be connected. Okay. Now, in the analysis the initial position of the output shaft that is the shaft rotational angle zeta is taken as 0. What we are considering with this axis when this uh, uh, crest is at top dead center that angle is 0. Uh, the center C and O lie on the x, x dot axis this is x dash and uh, here is the x. So, it, it is lying on this axis both this axis of the star as well as the axis of x axis of the uh, envelope they coincides whereas, y axis is away at the center distance C O whereas, this one is the this is on y axis through the center of the envelope and it is uh, one of its dead zone we have called it uh, the top dead center and this is in the threshold of expansion phase that means immediately after that if we rotate in the clockwise directions here the expansion mode will start. Okay. Now, 
This means that the centers are interchanged from their original initial position during generation. So, in the previous lecture I have explained that um, how this generation is done. In that generation technique what we took initially that the center of the star was here or the centrode fixed for uh, star was here and the center of the uh, star uh, sorry the ring gear or envelope was here. Whereas, when we have started operation we have just interchanged the center. This means that while we are we shall consider the geometry for the envelope we have to take care of this transformations. Okay. Now, the positive z axis is along uh, this z do not confuse this z is not the number of the lobes, but this is the z axis x axis y axis and z axis is in the upward perpendicular direction of the plane of the paper that is in this it is from the here will be the z axis which is coinciding with the axis of the output shaft. The output shaft is also directed outward. So, z axis is coinciding with that which I have uh, just told you. Now, we have taken some axis on the star and ring. What are those? We have taken a C S 1, C S 2, C S Z be the central axis of the cylinders. This means on the envelope we are calling that envelope is acting as a cylinder. So, on the envelope from C the center of the envelope to the center of this portion that is you can say the center of the chambers that we have designated as C S. Now, according to the number of chambers we have numbered the chambers also we have given the S 1, S 2, S 3 etcetera. Now, here I have mentioned as a j th chamber any j th chamber, but on the with respect to the figure which I have drawn we should say this is chamber 1, this is chamber 1. In the phase analysis I have shown that this is the chamber 1, next chamber is chamber 2, whereas the chamber on the uh, x axis along the x axis when the rotation is uh, 0 in that case this chamber is chamber 7. So, this is you say if you put this number this is h 7 this is s 1 and c is the center. Okay. Similarly, we have taken O t 1 O t 2 capital T O t z minus 1 be the central axis through the crest of the or the of the convex portion of the epitrochoidal lobes. So, this is the convex portion the if we take the topmost point the crest point then we number is O t 1 O t 2 etcetera. But if you look into this case we have uh, taken as if the O t 1 is here it can be named otherwise this is the t into z minus 1 because there will be 6 lobes one lobe less than z. So, that is why uh, number will up to the z minus 1. Similarly, we have also taken O small t 1 O small t 2 O t 2 that is the that is through the lowest point of this profile okay, that is the concave portions. Mm, we have taken this. Now, these uh, lines uh, while we are analyzing the phases then which one is coinciding with which one depending on that we are giving the number we are assigning this is easy to understand, but in the present analysis our main concern is to estimate this area at any instant we will find this area and you may find that these are not much useful here. But uh, while you are writing something, presenting something, you can say, say suppose O S one has coin, uh, coincided with 
O T 1 capital T 1 or O capital T 2 like this huh? that is easy to understand. To estimate full active volume of a chamber the volumes at top dead center and bottom dead center are calculated. Suppose if we would like to find out what will be the volume expansion of a chamber, we calculate the volume at top dead center and bottom dead center. Top dead center means when the piston is at the top that means this is the top dead center. Whatever the volume at that condition that is not the active volume that is not the varying that is a constant volume that will be always there. So, we have to calculate separately this volume as well as we have to calculate when is the maximum volume at uh, bottom dead center and then if we subtract this we will get the volume of a chamber. When the shaft rotational angle is equal to 0 O T 1 coincides with C S Z in that case C S 7 if we take this Z is equal to 7 and chamber Z is at its top dead center. Hmm. Okay. Now, <coughs> after an angle that is it a 0, it is 0 which is, is calculated as pi by Z into Z minus 1, we will arrive and another chamber which is given by z minus z plus 1 by 2 h chamber reaches at its bottom dead center, uh, uh, but I have doubt I think this will be minus this will be true if we consider this is chamber 1, but we have considered this is chamber 1. So, possibly this will be z minus 1. So, that we can examine let us see again say if we let us consider this is 1 no this is 7. So, 1 2 3 so third one is reaching there. So, this will be z minus 1 by 2 not the z plus 1 it will be z minus 1, but this angle say this was at its top dead center when the shaft rotational angle was 0, whereas this will be at its bottom dead center then the shaft rotation can be calculated as pi divided by number of lobes on the envelope into the number of lobes on the epitocket that is star the ring number. So, suppose in this case we have taken 7 and this is 6. So, pi divided by 42 hmm, it is around 4.3 degree or 4.27 degree for after which this angle will be a uh, this chamber will be at its bottom dead center that is the maximum volume. So, what we can do we put the shaft rotation angle 0 we consider this 7th chamber we calculate the volume and next moment after 4 degree of rotation we consider the chamber th 3 and we calculate the volume. Then this volume minus this volume will give the volume of the 1 chamber 1 maximum volume displaced of a chambers. Okay. So, this we have to do but we must calculate this area now. So, this what I have discussed this is told here. Now, next slides what we will see that uh, referring to this figure the area A j, A j means ch uh, area of the j th chamber at an instant when this has rotated by any each angle. It is bounded by this area bounded by G H B D G H B D. 
Now, it is necessary to express the chamber area with respect to the axis fixed on the envelope. We will find out this area considering this axis, the fixed axis to fix to the envelope or the ring. So, the axis x c x dash and y c y dash fixed on the envelope are also axis of the fixed reference frame. That means, this is fixed. So, this you can say the axis of the fixed reference. So, we will transform all coordinates with respect to this to estimate this area. Assuming the simplest modified form of the envelope, what does it mean? We have assumed this envelope is nothing but that there is a circular ring and this is uh, on a ring on a ring with the inner circle of this one. So, this is the simplest form which we have considered and the instantaneous area a j of j th chamber is given by a j is equal to a 1 minus a 2, where a 1 is the area bounded by the curve joining the points c, d, g, h, b, c. So, we first we shall calculate c, d, g, h, b and again c, this area we shall calculate minus the area bounded by the lines and epitrochoidal curve joining B C D. So, if we subtract now this area from this area, we will get this instantaneous area of this. Now, how it is done? So, geometrical this is pure geometric analysis referring to this figure what we find the this is the area indicating C D G H B C is equal to area C E G H and then F then C first we consider this area ok. So, this is like that we are considering this area ok. Now, next we subtract C E G D C now we subtract this area and then we add C F B C this area and then finally, we subtract H F B H H F B H that is that area we exclude. So, ultimately we are getting this area. So, this you can check yourself uh, this equations and you will find that we are calculating ultimately this area ok. Now, <coughs> area in right hand side can be expressed as follows this is purely geometric analysis. First we have considered this one this is we have taken pi r s where r s is the radius of this inner circle hmm. pi r s square by z that is the whole area minus r s square this is we have taken one seventh of this area because this area will be one seventh and then we have taken r a square arc cos you can you can just understand this how it is this is the cos inverse arc cos means cos inverse of this angle. So, this is this will give uh, one pocket and then next we shall consider the another pocket we will get this one. So, this uh, you just uh, you have to take this figure and this you have to understand here a 0 square is this this is the a 0 this is square then r a square we have taken this this square minus r m square is this one cos inverse of that 
into r square will give you this area. Okay. Now, plus r m into a 0 r m into a 0 uh, into 1 minus this will give this area. So, we are going to get this area out of that. Next we consider the area uh, C E G D C C E D G and again C E D G uh, and C that means we are getting this area. This is again if you can find out that first this is a triangle we have considered A 0 into um, uh, this is perhaps not R 0 it will be R m theta R m this will be R m. So, this is slide number 7 this is R m, R m that means we are getting this perpendicular A 0 is this one. So, we are getting the area of this triangle this one then plus half R m square into cos uh, inverse of this angle uh, that we are getting uh, perhaps this area okay this area we are getting this area minus no yeah minus this area oh okay we are getting this area and then minus this so we are ultimately getting this area here now next we will consider c f b c so, c f b c this is simply half into a 0 r m by sin phi j these angles are called leaning angle that can be calculated for rotation of this shaft which oh, I have discussed in the last lecture. And finally, H f b h is nothing but this angle. Uh, so, this area this is r m square into cos of that plus half r m into phi g that means, we have considered this area first and then we have considered this area. So, now we are uh, we will substitute this value in equations um, 832 and in non dimensional link. Now, here is the question of non dimensional addition which I have shown in earlier case what we find that area uh, any distance we have put a bar the bar means it is the non dimensional uh, value non dimensional parameters. So, in that case what is done each and every parameter say if it is a length that it divided by r 0 what is capital r 0 what is capital r 0 capital r 0 is the capital R 0 is the uh, radius of the centroid the bigger centroid the centroid for the envelope. So, we have divided by R 0 to make non, non dimensional of any length A 0 R m etcetera. So, this means that while we are considering area suppose we have calculated this one what will be the actual area then A 1 bar into R 0 square capital R 0 square will be the area that you should remember. Now, in the non dimensional form this can be expressed as that I am not reading it. So, this when this equation is available you can just sum up and non dimensionally you will arrived into that. So, now we have calculated only one area A 1. In the next page what we do we find out how the A 2 now for uh, this a 2 the coordinates of b and d with respect to x o y where this this angle this angle uh, is with the reference to the 
original generation of profile epitrochoids. You just look at this, this angle indicates the sap rotation, whereas this angle with respect to the original development of the profile. Now, what you can find say, say this angle for the generations we take for the jth chamber psi j is equal to beta, beta is in this case pi by z that means half of this uh, angular spread between two rollers plus the angle of rotation. Okay. So, beta plus angle of rotation we will consider for this one. Similarly, for the other one the this angle this angle we will consider beta plus 2 pi by z plus this angle then sub rotations. So, in the original formula of the profile we will put this value and this value to get the coordinates of these two contact points. Okay. So, therefore, these coordinates can simply be written in this form. If you use this one, you will find these coordinates. Okay. So, this is uh, being transformed from the origin original coordinates what we have calculated with respect to the reference frame. Okay. First of all, we have to calculate these two and then we will transform in this coordinate system. Next, uh, he, here I have mentioned this beta may be pi by z or any other angle, only we have to take care of the proper geometry. Now, next uh, we will express the A 2 in the dimensional non dimensional form. Now, this is from this uh, epitrochoidal geometry it can be shown that this integration will give us this area A 2. If we would like to find out this area then knowing these coordinates of these two we can differentiate like this. Now, here I have presented this formula this is from the earlier lecture. So, this is the formula for expressing the coordinates of the envelope at any uh, this psi angle. Okay. Now, in that case we have calculated this angle separately and we are adding to that. Remember we have to calculate leaning angle while we are trying to calculate this coordinates of any contact point that is you have to um, also um, take uh, the formula in the earlier lecture to calculate this properly. Okay. <coughs> now, um, if we evaluate this uh, integral we will arrived into this formula, but still one integration part will be there for which this can be expressed in this form. That now this integration uh, is not uh, presented in the any closed form. Closed form solution is not given here, so we have to go for numerical integration to evaluate this. Okay, but maybe a mathematician can he can find out something, but otherwise we have to go for this uh, numerical integration. And uh, this is that you can find out this also. This is not difficult to find out. This is the leaning angle, that means this angle. So, finally, uh, okay, before going into calculation these chambers, here one interesting note is given that now we have calculated in the a, as a, a to this area. Now, at any instant if we add all such areas together that must give the area of the rotor which is important to find out 
out the envelope I mean total area under the profile of the star which can be simply we if we add all the area calculated like this at an instant we can simply get this area of the star ok. Now, the second term in uh, is nothing but the area bounded by d o b this equation can be modified to the form uh, this one reference you will find that one reference he developed the formula in other way uh, it was it was uh, to me it was more cumbersome but i have simplified this formula and uh, to and we arrived into in this form which we will uh, see in the next slide. Okay. So, what I have done I have substituted all the uh, findings all the formulation in non dimensional form and ultimately we get uh, this will be the area of a chamber at any instant that means, when the shaft is rotated by this angle okay, we will get this angle or so to say I would um, consider if we consider any j and whether it is rotation is 0, 1 degree whatever it might, might be if we substitute these values we will get this area of a particular chamber. If we consider the next chamber we have to take all such values accordingly. The rate of change of this area with respect to the output shaft rotation is expressed in general form for both inward and outward modifications as follows. Now, what we have done we have first calculated this area. Now, here we have derived this as a a rate of change of this area with respect to the shaft rotation which now becomes in this form. If we look into this, this is basically you will find that this uh, motion of this epitrochoidal area this has no correct connection of the other geometric relations. It is obvious the fixed part is eliminated in this case. It, it clearly indicates that whatever shape we take for this envelope keeping this active envelope portion intact that means, instead of taking this portion and uh, this fixed portion as a this circular even if we take a big hole or even if, if we make a curve like this, this equation will remain same. So, because this is only the variation of the volume which is working volume. Now, if we get this one then okay, here I, I, I would like to mention one thing that uh, this modification may be inward and outward this profile can be modified outward also see in case of Wankel engine this is modified in the outward directions like that is small modification of course. So, to accommodate this whatever may be the modifications in that case of obviously, it is inward directions. What we have done we have used a equation cos phi 0 in fact, this phi 0 we can put along this axis. So, when this angle is pi that that means, this becomes minus 1 this is for outer modification. That means, in this formula for the orbit motor what we have considered we will put minus 1. So, this will become plus ok. Whereas, if we modify in the outward directions we will put this is equal to 1 that means, in that case this angle is 0 and in inward modification this phi 0 angle is pi. So, it is coming minus 1 that we have to remember. Now, again so, this variation this is obviously, will valid for whether in, in, in compression mode 
and whether it is expansion mode. Okay. But we have to identify very carefully as long as this is in say expansion mode, we will uh, add with the other chambers which is in expansion mode because this machines in orbit machines is also a DC machines not alternating machines all the flow is being mixed. Suppose at an instant we find the chamber 1, chamber 2 and chamber 3 this is in, in the positive value. So, we will put this D A P that is in expansion mode and whenever we will get say for the chambers we will get this is minus we will put that separately and we will that make that this is in the compression mode. But the interestingly we will find that summation of these uh, positive and negative will always constant that means flow in flow out will remain constant and another interesting information I would like to give you here although it is not shown, but if you take one chamber to the corresponding chambers you may find that the volume in and volume out is not same or in other words uh, when uh, say one chamber is in the expansion mode. Let us consider in this case or if I consider the fixed axis in that case this angle will be nothing but this 2 pi by z that is the angle for any phase is expansion on compressions. Now, this phase what we find 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 degree say such we will make it. The interestingly we will find that for a particular angle the compression and expansion of a chamber is not equal. Whereas, in case of ordinary piston machines this is equal. So, whatever may be the rotations whether it is suction or compressions you will find a single degree of rotations this volume is constant. In this case these volumes are ni neither constant nor it is matching with the expansion phase and compression phase. Whereas, if we consider the overall that is matching and it has to match otherwise this machine will become impossible it will not rotate smoothly. Anyway our purpose is to find out the swift volume. So, what we it is to be noted that this rate of change of area is independent of the shape of the inactive envelope this is inactive envelope maybe say suppose this is the contact point up to this. So, this this portion is active and this circular arc and this circular arc all inactive. So, it really this formula is independent of this area whatever it might be <coughs> sorry whatever <coughs> the area in equation 9 which is different for other approximated curves is only useful to calculate the area and volume at an instant. Only thing suppose if you would like to find out the trapped volume unused trapped volume then you have to consider the geometry. The expression of uh, for flow rate speed ripples etcetera for such a rotary piston machines with different kinematics that is 0 tor orbit units with star output ring output etcetera can is can easily be derived with the help of equivalent system concept what it is. Now, orbit motor what we have seen <coughs> the ring remains fixed and output is taken through the star star is having two rotations one rotation is uh, the revolving actions around the central axis um, that is the axis of the outer ring and it has also rotation about its own axis which is the output in case of orbit motor and orbit uh, this version is only used as a motor because other pump version is not 
uh, efficient or beneficial from the um, transmission point of view, volume displacement point of view, it, it needs if we make uh, and pump with orbit principle, it will need large torque for slow speed which is not available from the engine. So, it is not beneficial. On the other hand, when we make it fixed axis, then which is called G rotor, also a special name is assigned G roller when we use this type of roller. When it is integral, usually call it is G rotor or we should call in general case it is G rotor unit that is fixed axis unit. What is fixed axis unit? In that case, both rotates about their own axis, but even they rotates about their own axis, you will find this compression expansion that variation of this area will occur. So, that can be used as a pump as well as that can be used as a motor also. Now, what we have done, we are analyzing all such area and everything with respect to the orbit motor, but it is possible that if we know the kinematics. So, same formula also can be used for the other kinematics that means, 0 to units. How? Let us see. Now, what we do? The general flow we can express that what we have derived that this is 2 pi n r, n r is the output rotations, the b is the width. So, d a p and d gamma. This gamma is, is general angle of rotations we have given. So, this simply if you add them you will find out what is the rotations and in, in, in case of orbit motor this we will put eta and this is the output rotation of the shaft. Now, <coughs> this angle is nothing but transmission ratio into <coughs> this angle. This transmission ratio we have derived separately which is not given here. So, directly if you would like to use this formula you had to know this, this um, transmission ratio in terms of the gearing in between this uh, star and ring which is tabulated form available one of the references. Hmm. Okay. Now, in case of obviously, in case of orbit motor we will put this as a 1, orbit motor this as a 1. So, we can easily calculate uh, this one or simply this will be replaced by this 1 in case of orbit motor. Now, here I have written is in case of 1 for orbit unit. So, without following the table you can still calculate this if you follow this one. For G rotor with unit with ring rotation, when the ring is rotating simply you put 1 by 1 by z minus 1. So, we will get this value and then this um, flow rate will be for that G rotor unit with ring rotations. For the star rotations this will be 1 by z and we will find this the same expression. In case of orbit motor this is 1. However, the generalized dimensions less swift volume V s can be expressed for unit width, width is given by B of star ring as follows. What we do? in case of so this first we calculate this it is 1 for say orbit motor and then we multiply with this this is flow rate volume in and we integrate up to this angle and then we simply find out so this is i would say rather it is a complicated form to find out the swept volume but automatically from the flow rate we should be able to get the uh, swept volume. So, this is shown here, but I will show you the simplest way of calculating the um, uh, swept volume. Now, this is again the same thing I have described here while you are using this formula. 
the average geometric volume displacement q a average you see this if you estimate this one with respect to this there we will find the flow fluctuation. So, what we should do um, I mean once we calculate this we simply multiply with the uh, width factor and because this is for the unit unit volume unit width. So, we have to multiple here multiply here with b and then the rotational speed. Now, the alternative method of calculating swift volume this is to just to calculate the swift volume what we can do we can calculate the BDC and TDC at area area of the chambers at BDC and TDC and which I have earlier explained that if you for the geometry we have considered if you consider this angle is equal to 0 then you can first calculate the this area at chamber 7 which is the chamber at uh, top dead center and then after a rotation of pi by z into z minus 1 angle you can take the other one that is z minus 1 by 2 that is in this case this will be 3 third chamber after this um, after that rotation of pi by z into z minus 1 and then you will get the, the bottom dead center area. So, and then what you would do the working uh, volume is nothing but the area difference of these two areas into the width. Now, the swift volume is calculated then as follows for orbit motor what we do simply this volume of one chamber into this action in one revolution that means how many such chamber actions will be there in case of orbit motor z into z minus one time so you simply you multiply this you will get the swift volume of orbit motor interestingly in orbit motor this is one respect to the other that means either star rotating with respect to the ring or ring rotating with respect to the star. So, in that case there will be single formula to find out this swift volume whether the star it is rotating or ring is rotating whether whereas, in case of 0 tor unit this will be either V c into z or V c into z minus 1 depending on ring and star rotation respectively because in that case suppose your star is output both are rotating star is output in that case you will find that when the star on full rotation is done actually 6 chambers are displacement is there not the 7 chambers whereas, if the uh, ring is rotating then 7 I have mentioned 7 or 6 in that case z minus 1 and z. So, carefully if we use we can calculate the swift volume of the um, ring uh, I mean 0 tor depending on which one is the output. Let the star ring of an orbit motor have the following data we will take an numerical example. Now, in that case we have taken z is equal to 7 e 0 bar is 1.625 r m bar is equal to 0 0.405 beta b is approximately 0 0.7 it is slightly not 0 0.7 some value is there and r s means this one is 1.55 whereas, r 0 is 19.6805 approximately 20. So, you can imagine what is the actual dimensions. Okay. Then this is R 0 is the radius of the inner centroid, centroid for the uh, epitrochoid uh, which is 16.869, but this is not required because we have non dimensional lies with respect to this one. Interestingly 
say we use a 0 r m bar, but we never use this c 0 bar, because c 0 bar is nothing but 1 by z, because this you will find this and a relation r 0 by capital R 0 by small r 0 is nothing but z by z minus 1. So, as their difference will be 1 z. So, this means that c 0 bar is 1 by z. So, in the formula you will find that not c 0 bar is used only 1 by z is used. Okay. So, with this data if we calculate this area what we have done for the swift volume a z uh, we, we have taken first a 7 we have calculated and then this is again I have made a, made a mistake. So, this is this will be minus 1 by 2 the third chambers and this is a 3 and uh, we will get this now this area. These two areas are uh, A T D C and A B D C respectively. Therefore, we will now e use equation 14 to calculate the working full volume of a chamber which becomes this and uh, you see this I have not shown the calculation, but to calculate this area we have used this formula and ultimately we have found out that this full volume of a chamber working volume will be around 2 cc very close to that. So, therefore, the swift volume of an orbit motor of with these data it will be 84 cc per revolution the flow required is 84 cc. So, you can imagine that in case of the fixed axis it will be either 7 times less or 6 times less than that for one revelations. This is one. Second thing look at the size, size is say A 0 is 1.625 if you multiply with this 20 it will become 20 plus 12 30 or maybe 35 millimeter here and this might be another say 20. So, it is 55 to 60 millimeter at the most. So, diameter will be 120 millimeter which is less than 5 inch 120 millimeter will be something like this. So, this is the size of the motor whereas, and thickness is only 14 millimeter if you multiply with this it is close to 14 millimeter, but you see this how much volume is required for one rotation obviously, this is due to the gearing action in inside. So, in this way you can calculate the swift volume also you can calculate you have to obviously, you have to make the numerical integration to find out the volume displacement of such machines. So, these are the um, um, references I would say that this paper you will not be able to follow because this is in uh, this is old as well as this is in German language. I think not in not even German language it is something it is uh, not exactly German language. I think these two people were from Austrian people. They, this, if you read this paper, you will have some idea about this um, fixed axis machine, not orbit motor. Also, Kolbarne he derived uh, such a displacement formula for um, fixed axis, and Thoma he is. Uh, uh, I have used this how to phase it changed and other. Uh, this so you can read this uh, book also, but if you would like to know that uh, phase differences and uh, volume change etcetera. So, you can read this paper. Okay, thank you.